So the bioadapter has uh, many promises, uh, basically, especially if we're looking at all different subset of patients, such as diabetics, such as uh, lung lesions or uh, small vessels or uh, proximal LADs. Those are all possibilities where the bioadapter has or may offer big differences compared to uh, current trochilidine stents. Very often, lung lesions are very difficult to treat. Um, they are calcified, they are diffuse, and so you need a, a long, uh, long length of stents to uh, to cover the disease. And basically, you sort of create a, a a full metal jacket of the artery, not allowing any changes over time. And that's exactly where bioadapter may uh, come into place and overcome these, uh, these uh, shortcomings just because of the fact they are able to uncage the vessel and therefore allow, again, vasomotor function. I personally think that it will be quite applicable to long salmon stenting, especially when you have a very tapering artery, very angulated vessels, that the unlinking will prevent massive straightening or, or vessel, for example, long salmon RCA stenting it potentially can have less mechanical complication. So I'm talking about mechanics of it, less stent fracture in my mind. You have less vessel straightening and therefore immediately better vessel motion. In terms of, of um, small vessels, the problem that we're dealing with is because of nature of the, of the small diameter is that the amount of scar tissue that is being built up, again, narrows the vessel sooner and uh, with conventional DES and make the, uh, the vessel also uh, stiffer due to the, un due to caging of, of the artery. So the bioadapter has a significant um, uh, advantage here because uh, the lumen area is maintained and, and the bioadapter uh, area increases and, and the vessel area increases. So therefore you allow positive adaptive remodeling. The problem with diabetic vessels uh, is that they are long, diffusely diseased and or also um, small caliber, they are calcified. And that's really a problem to, uh, to deal with these vessels. The lumen area um, or the neomintimal hyperplasia amounts may be low, but there is basically no, no change in dynamics of the vessel. And having a device such as the bioadapter may allow to uncage the vessel and therefore allow vasomotor function, uh, have a positive adaptive remodeling, not dealing with geometric distortion, restoring vessel angulation in these uh, diabetic vessels. Let's imagine if you have a patient who is young, who will exercise actively, whose vessel is more or less torturous. Uh, on the angiogram. In all this combination, if you put in a uh, conventional or a second generation DES, maybe you will strength the, uh, straighten the vessel, you will take away the uh, positive remodeling cap capability and also you lose the positivity of that vessel segment. In those situations, in this scenario, I think dynamics would be the perfect answer for interventional cardiologist. So there's been reports that the LAD clearly compared to the other arteries has more twists and moves and therefore has more uh, shear stress that will be associated with negative outcomes. So when you stent this with conventional DES, that may, may even make it worse. And I think there is a value um, for the bioadapter for the LAD lesions because due to the uncaging, it also allows restoration of rotational motion in the stented arterial segment. And that is something that is unique that has not been seen by any of the other um, conventional drug eluting stents. So there, there will be patients uh, in whom we think a dynamics will be superior to the other DS.